another Am I the Asshole story for you guys, all right? Mm -hmm. I want you guys to give me unfiltered opinions, but I want you to give your honest opinions, okay. all right, as, okay. as to what you're hearing right Be now. Be honest. Always are. Always are, right? <laughs> they know. Sure. They know. They know. <laughs> okay. Am I the asshole for refusing to help out my friend financially, even though I'm debt-free? Okay. My friends and I are all university students between the ages of 19 and 22, but this story mostly focuses on me, 19 female, and Emma, also 19 female. The backstory to this is that my dad died when I was seven in a horrible accident at work. It was entirely the company's fault, and they ended up shelling out a lot of money in fines and settlements. Part of my family settlement was, on, was that, on top of a lump sum available when I'm 25, that the company pays for my university fees and other university costs incurred including housing, meal plans, textbooks, etc. While this is not right or okay what happened to my dad, the money has helped me and my family an unbelievable amount. Mm. I've had I've had I've not had to get a job at any point during university and my friends are all aware of, of my final of my financial circumstances as it came up naturally when talking about my father's death. Recently, Emma has had her work hours significantly reduced brackets partly due to the pandemic and partly due to the company she works for shrinking and is now struggling to pay her rent and genuinely survive. We live in London, so you can imagine the cost of living here. She doesn't qualify for a whole lot of student finance. A few minutes of my friends, including Emma, or sorry, a few of my friends, including Emma, approached me and asked me if I'd be willing to take on a part-time job to help Emma out, basically <laughs> giving her my wages. The rest of them basically work full-time together, and I doubt they could ever get another job themselves. I decline and explain that I purpose I purposely don't have sorry, I purposely don't have a job so I can focus on my studies and volunteer work I do in my dream industry. On top of that, I if I did work, I wouldn't want to work for literally no money as it would be all going to Emma. One of my friends said she understood and apologized for asking. I wasn't insulted that they asked, but you know how we Brits love an apology. The other three, four including Emma, said that I was being selfish and inconsiderate and that they do the same for me. I feel horrible. On one hand, I don't really want to work for nothing when I need to focus on my studies, and on the other, it's a pandemic and Emma really needs some help. If I don't try to help her, she might not be able to stay here and might have to drop out. Am I the asshole? Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Talk about it. You know, I was on that person's side for a bit. You know, like I get it. You're a on hard times, you know, you don't have enough money. COVID is a time where everybody is losing their jobs, not getting enough hours. There's no job security. But for you to tell me, yo, I need you to get a job to support me. And you're just somebody I met, you know? <laughs> you're like, what the? First of all, I wouldn't even do that for anybody, in my opinion. Like, I think that is so... The fact that there was a conclusion that, yo, let me have this guy work, but everything that he makes is mine. I, I never even considered that a thought process, even if I was ever broke, you know? I think that's so entitled, first and foremost. And, like, personally for me, I, I see nothing wrong with helping people, you know? Like, if I have the means to help. Like, in my opinion, money is just a tool in order to support something else, you know? Right. Because money comes and goes. It's not, it's not going to... I don't like when people put, like, worth to money, you know? Like, it shouldn't be something that you're obsessed with it's more of like a means to sustain your lifestyle and support the people around you that you love you know but for her to come out and just say like i need you to dedicate time of your life to go get a job to provide for me i think that's ludicrous yes i think and the last thing i'm gonna say is like sometimes man it's not made for you if you can't afford to be here i know it sounds kind of rude to say it's not your time to go to school if you can't afford it don't put your trials and tribulations onto somebody else, assuming that they'll support you. Maybe they're down the pipeline when you have enough money, you can come back, come back to school, do what you need to do in order to get a better job. But you shouldn't be out here thinking that people are just going to support you just because they're friends with you. You know, am I crazy to think that? No, 100%. Like, what the hell? What do you think? I, I thought it was, no, you can't, you, they came all together trying to approach her on, take up your time that's the one thing where sh they cross the line especially as a collective approaching somebody saying hey instead of saying hey can we all chip in and give her a loan they said hey can you go get a job and take time out or whatever your schedule is and I think that's where they went crazy and then to be 
audacity to have be offended by that the her response saying no i think that's where yeah they're they're what's the word mm-hmm. uh, i forgot what the word i was trying to say was but yeah they they came off they came off a certain way of entitlement that's what i was about to say and they came off a certain way of abusing a friendship of trying to make her feel bad for saying no i'm in school no i have other things to do and i'm not trying to get a whole part-time job to take time away from whatever else i have to do to put money towards someone that can downgrade her life or can put herself in another situation where she can't leave school or she can't change apartments to a little bit of a lesser one or try to move in with somebody try to get some sort of government assistance try to get a bank loan or something of that nature to help her pay th- a few things off. I want to disagree with this guy because I don't like d- agreeing with him. But <laughs> yeah, there, there's no way someone's going to come up and say, hey, can you change up your whole life because I'm in a tough position instead of asking for, hey, can you guys give me a loan that I can pay you guys back? Or, hey, can we find another solution of how we can assist her in helping her facilitate her life? Right. I agree with exactly what you just said. I'm not going to lie to you. I also am kind of reading in between the lines of this story that they're 19 and 19 to 22 is the age range that was given and they're really young. So I don't, I like to see this as them not knowing any better in a sense, because like you said, to ask somebody for a loan is one thing. That's Mm -hmm. a natural thing that occurs from time to time, but to ask somebody for their time for your financial gain or for your survival is also, that's more of an ask, you know, especially Mm -hmm. when people have their own things going on, which clearly this person does, right? So in that sense, I feel like the friends are kind of, they they kind of have a convoluted idea of support from friends and how they should be towards each other um, because they're, they're just in, they're in university right now, right? So they're experiencing life for the first time. And this is probably some of the few, some of the friends probably that were considering the person that's writing the story to be selfish and inconsiderate, they could probably be experiencing their first form of real life struggle. And this is how they're reacting to it. You know, they're kind of yeah. trying to put their chips together and figure out a solution, although it's not a realistic based solution. Right. And the reason why I don't think it's realistic based is because this is their first interaction with reality. Mm-hmm. Right. So they're thinking we all have part time jobs. You're the only person that doesn't have a part. I'm just trying to think of the psyche behind yeah. this thinking. I'm not That's saying it. necessarily I agree with it, but mm-hmm. they're probably thinking we all have part time jobs and this person their hours got significantly reduced. So we're just chipping in and adding to them. And since you don't have a job because of your circumstances at home with your, with your finances and how your dad passed away, they're thinking it's only beneficial that we add somebody else to this pot that's growing to help this person out in terms of like working to support somebody. Now, in reality, that doesn't make any sense, right? Because everybody has their own life. Everybody has their own struggle, right? Everybody's got their own path in front of them, right? And to kind of take steps out of your life to kind of help somebody get back on track of theirs is a real big commitment that most likely people aren't going to make with friends, you know? Family is a different kind of conversation, right? Because you grew up with them. You probably have more of an attachment to them, better relationship. I can understand that being um, a a deciding factor to help somebody with giving them your time. But since this is a friend group, I don't think they quite understand the idea of friendship, you know? The idea of friendship is to be a support system for somebody to an extent, you know, obviously the level of friendship you have with that person matters too. But I feel like at 19 or these early ages of like adulthood, it's kind of misconstrued in people's head of how close people are with other people. Cause I think about it in relation to my life too. When I was 19 or 18 or in those early years, the people that I was seeing on a day-to-day basis are different from the people that I see on a day-to-day basis now. And that's because we all grow and we all go through our lives and we get a head start of who we truly want to be, right? But I can't tell you that I would sit here and I can't sit here and say that I would have taken significant time out of my life to in in being becoming who I am to help somebody else yeah. that I considered a friend. You know what I mean? Right. And that's not something that I'm saying as like a, a in a in a in a negative way. It's more so just looking at it in logistics, you know, like the actual reality of my life would not allow me to do that. You know? Mm-hmm. So like you said, there are avenues that they can take, you know, like helping people uh, with financial institutions that help people out. You know, there's there's a uh, there's student aids and stuff like that. There's so many like avenues of support that this person can help see, or can get 
through other ways yeah. that I don't think that these people are kind of aware of, you know, because they're young and they're just experiencing life, like I said. So I don't necessarily blame the people because their intentions were good. They were trying to help their friend out. Yeah. It's just they didn't really understand the gravity of what they were asking. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's it's kind of like a melting pot of shitty situations happening on two different ends. Because yeah. on this side, the person that's writing the story is looking at their friends like, how dare you even try to ask me for that? 100%. You know? And then on the other side, the friend group is looking at them like, oh, you couldn't take a couple hours out of your day the same way we are to help this person that you consider a friend to. It's just a, 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 a bad mix of thoughts and emotions that can be easily, not necessarily easily, but can be helped out <clears throat> with <clears throat> a little bit more knowledge about services, you know, institutions, things that can help people in these times of need. And even just putting a pause on your life, coming back to school later on, like you said, you know, like there are ways to get through struggle that don't rely on other people struggling with you, you know, and I think that they're yet to realize that. So in that sense, I don't think that this person is the asshole. I just think that they're in a situation where they have to make a decision now and understand that their friends are going to think what they think because of the situation they're in. And they have to think about their selves too, in the sense of I've got a lot going for me and I can't let this hold me back. So it's a shitty situation, but I would move on. Honestly, if I was that person, I would move on, mm -hmm. you know, keep my respect from a distance, but I, I can't be the one. like, if you're going to blame me for you struggling, then I don't think we can continue this friendship to be honest with you. So that's That's, that was very well said first and foremost. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate that. Thank you. That was very good. Thanks. But to add to that point, uh, <clears throat> just to be straight up, bro, like l life is not cookies and cream all the time. Right. You know, there are going to be times where you face harsh reality. Mm -hmm. And sometimes going into adulthood, that harsh reality is you can't afford life. Mm -hmm. And one of the luxuries of life and, you know, is education. Not everybody gets the luxury of going to education because it's expensive. It's obviously, especially, I'm assuming they're in the United States. No, they right. said London. Uh, London. Okay. Yeah, England. I'm they, they have a the higher... Um, Oxford, right? Yeah, All that. so it's expensive to live life and be like that. So to your point, I think she needs to circle back, be able to afford that and come back at a later time. Mm -hmm. Because I can never imagine, like, and this may be just personally for me, I hate asking people for stuff. Like, I, I never told you guys, but there was a time when I was 18, fam. And then I needed medication. And I didn't want to ask anybody. Because I was so embarrassed that the medication was $11. <laughs> and, Your pride and is I, so I, strong. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I didn't have $11 dollars on me, fam. And I, I didn't want to ask my parents because I, I had a job at the time. Didn't want to ask you guys because I thought it would be weird. Request. So you're like, I'd rather die. So I'll be like, yo, I'll just... I'll wait till I get my paycheck. I'll rather I'll, die you know, in the meantime. Hundred percent. I'm like, I'll just wait until. I see later. what you're saying, though. Yeah. So it's hard to ask. And sometimes. for for her to not only ask for money, but on a continuous basis, they're asking for a a plan. Like, listen, you get your paycheck on this day. You send me your money on this day. Like, how how do you have such the audacity to do that? Like, It'd make more sense if they ask for a loan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that would make more if sense. You, like if you, you if you approached me like, yo, there's four of us, let's all put in a bill a month. And maybe we can do something, you know? I'll be like, that's... That makes more sense that's to me. That's a better place There's a hundred dollars that is expendable. Yeah, it's a better place to stand on. Right. Than for you to come to me and be like, yo, I need you to work a part-time job, 20 hours at the end of the shift, you'll make sure you this, transfer me everything. Put on this cash here <laughs> yeah. up right now. <laughs> like, who, who the hell do you think you are? How, how are you so entitled to think that I would be some form of a butler or finance of your, your lifestyle? Like, who... Like, in, in another point that you made was, yeah, they're 18 to 22, right? This is the first time that they're going to reach, a, like, adult problems. And maybe during their childhood, they had their parents take care of everything, you know? And now that you don't have that cushion to fall on, now you're faced with the real reality of not everything is going to work out. You know, like, when we watch Disney, when we watch movies, there's always a happy ending. Right. Life is not always a happy ending. No, no. Sometimes really. you have to come to the harsh reality mm -hmm. that... This is not what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. It might look like a different route, mm -hmm. but I'm still going to get there eventually, you know? Right. So in my opinion, pull out, get your money, come back later or, and then do what you need to do, you know? Because yeah. I'm not, <clears throat> don't ever ask something like that of somebody, you know, even if they're your close friend. Yeah. Because then you're taken away from their life. Right. You know? Right. Right. I agree. hundred percent. And in, in, in essence, no one's coming to save you. You know what I mean? Wait to say it. No one's coming to save you. It's no just Superman. you out here. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to understand that at some point in your life. And if you're leaning on people for support in the sense that they are the ones that are helping you live your life, 
then that's going to come and hit you later on, some point down the line. And this yeah. is kind of a good instance of that. Let's get it out the mud time. That's what the 20s are for. Yeah. Everyone's thugging it out. Everyone's sleeping on the floors. Everyone's, some people are sleeping in the cars and they're working part-time jobs. They're working full-time jobs that may not be what exactly they want to do down the line. And if you're at that stage right now, embrace it. Because even, for example, us, starting off this podcast, we're recording in different rooms and strange areas and trying to figure things out mm -hmm. until we got Frizzo and he ended up helping us out. That's just our form of this path. Mm -hmm. And everyone's path is different. Everyone's path. Is, uh, 19, I was working factory jobs, trying to figure things out. Shout out. Yeah. Trying to, I didn't know how to lift. You gotta, some guy had to coach me how to lift boxes. Lift with the legs. Cause, lift with yeah. the legs. Now with the back. You have to bend your knees bend when, the knees. when, when yeah, you're lifting the boxes. Talk to him. Because your, your, your lower back, I swear I had lower back pain and knee pain for a long time. At 19? Uh, no, later on, because I did, was not picking up the boxes properly. Oh, okay. That started building up strain on my back and my knee. So that's something you get educated about in different areas. And they kept on telling me, yo, this is an older Guyanese and Jamaican guys that were, where I was working with telling me, yo, go back to school, yo. I'm I'm here because I have to, because I have this amount of kids that I have to figure things out for. You don't, you're not at that age. Take care of it. My brother tells me, take care of your time right now because you're at a certain age where you don't have too many responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And these are some lessons that people need. 19, you got to figure things out. If one the option's not there, you got to find another avenue. If that avenue is not there, you got to find a third avenue and try pivot. to figure things out. You got to pivot, yeah. Thug it out. Thug it out. I agree. Yeah. You know, I, I, just to kind of end this up, I have a kind of a general question for you guys. Do you think it's possible in life to avoid struggle? No. No. No, no, no. For everyone. No. It's, struggle comes in different shapes and forms. Right. Just right. even, let's say, let's take away our personal experience. Like, you know how we grew up not that rich? We're very low income. Let's, let's take our mind out of it. Even if I was a rich guy, even if I came from a rich household, there are challenges that I would face even as a high income household, you know, like where I will ultimately be, like what passion I would do. Like, like we have different levels of struggle, but I still think struggle is what natural to life. You know what I mean? So no one can avoid struggle. Yeah, no one can avoid struggle, bro. Hmm. Interesting. You know what I mean? I, I feel like that's true, but in a sense, I also feel like some people are oblivious to the struggle they're going through, right? Give me an example. Like, I see, like, uh, a lot of the time, I see, like, rich, rich, rich people mm -hmm. having the most wild kids, you know, just, like, spoiled and just very entitled, and they don't even see that they have a problem, Yeah. right? And I see those people, like, just kind of living life day to day, yeah. ignorant to the fact that they're a menace to society, Yeah. you know? And I look at them like, do they know that they're struggling? I ask myself, do they know that they're struggling? Because they have so much of the stuff that people want, yeah. right? But they don't have a lot of the things that people need. Mm. You know what I mean? Like intelligence, oh, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So in that sense, it is a struggle visually. I can see it. Mm -hmm. But does this person know that they're going through this? Or are they blind to it? I think they, they probably, in some sorts, try to block the majority of it out. But I don't think you can never... No one can ever be blind to a full struggle of what what's going on around them. Like the first example, when you said, "Does everyone have the same?" Like, does everyone realize their struggle? My mind went to wrestling. Like, Rey Mysterio may go over that top or bottom rope when he enters the ring, but Big Show may go through the over the top rope. Okay, doesn't mean both of them have their own trials and tribulations once they're in that ring, and they have to deal with whatever comes as the opponent. Oh. But Entering the ring is different at different heights. Yeah. Still, we're all still playing the same game of life and everyone has to figure out what they're, what they're going through. Some people may use drugs to, to block that out. Some people, all the eyes are on them. Some people know eyes are on them. They, they got to still figure out whatever, whatever's coming down the road to them, however they're going to move or maneuver around it. Like you seen that video of Kobe Bryant the bar, the that car coming right at him, yeah, and he, him leaping over it. Yeah, that was fake, though. Huh? That was fake. 
I I thought it was real. Did you this think it was real? This whole time, you thought he jumped over a car for real? I, knew it I thought it was, I thought <laughs> it was real. <laughs> bro. Huh? It's fake. It was I fake. thought it was real. <laughs> you thought that was real? Kobe Bryant was a superhero to us. Why would the Lakers age. let him do that? Huh? Why would the Lakers Why ever let him do that? I seen it I seen was a kid. I didn't think of it. Did you but think LeBron? Years. Yo, did you think LeBron? I didn't think of it. Huh? Remember when LeBron was throwing from full court? The full court yeah, shots, right? Think that was the one-handed ones? Yeah, did you think that was not Curry? No, that was LeBron years ago. It was ago. years ago. Remember when LeBron was seven no, I, in a row? I didn't see that. I seen Curry, then I seen the deep fake okay, they did right. for him. Okay. You learn something new every day. What? Interesting. I'm just saying, you learn something new every day. No, I didn't think of it until, like, right now, since I, I seen it when I was a kid, then I moved on. Yeah. Then right now, I just brought it up as an example. Okay. But thank you for... for he said it. Me. I didn't say Why are you looking no, at I'm, me? No, I'm looking at both of you. I'm looking at both of <laughs> no, you. Thank no, no. you. Thank you he for stepping on the childhood memory. He burst in your bubble, not me. Thank you for stepping on childhood memory. But what, one more thing I want to say is um, we're so used to, because um, I, I like this idea of the hierarchy of needs. Like we're just so used to basic struggle in terms of making sure our normal necessities are met, you know, like food, rent, you know, stuff, security, you know, going to the point where if we were to be from a healthier household, our struggle would be different because we would be looking, our basic needs would be met. So next level would be, like relationships, like how, am I am I finding value in these relationships? Do they do they make me whole? You know, and then maybe going to another one where am I passionate about what I'm doing? You know, L the luxury of being able to step away from each level of struggle and kind of get to the next level. I think it's what's important and what I'm you know what I and myself and hopefully you guys should all be striving for. But at every level, there is struggle that you must obtain in order to go to the next. You know. Because at the end of the level, it's like self-actualization. Am I happy with wh where I am as my current, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, if I am to leave this planet right now, did, did, did I accomplish anything? And that's really important to me. Like, I want to, in, in order to get to that point, I know there's going to be struggles in order to make sure that I am content with who I am as a person, you know? Mm -hmm. So then once, like, I know there's going to be a lot of struggle to get to that point, but that's obviously away from what we've grown from, like the basic need struggle, you know? Does that make sense? Yeah, hundred percent. I think uh, a, an added added layer to that conversation would be self awareness. Totally. Right? Yeah. Um, that really matters in helping you navigate through your life, even through struggle, through goodness, through everything. Mm -hmm. Just shaping who you are or understanding who you are mm -hmm. will help you through all that. You know, okay. and that's that's the most intriguing thing for me. I'm more, I'm always always curious to know how self aware people are about themselves. Mm. You know, but yeah, I guess uh, we'll leave it off there. Mm. Lasting comments. Is this person the asshole writing the story? No. No? No. no. Mm. We're all in agreement. 100%. Fix up, bro. Emma. The fuck? Get a job. 